Hello everyone. In our last video, we used Microsoft Office Excel to create the candidate personal data table. In this video, we will be going forward and we will be creating the additional two tables using the same Microsoft Office Excel. Now, those two tables are the constituency table as well as elections data table. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the spreadsheet file. This is the old table. And we're going to create two additional sheets the first one we're going to create and we're going to rename it and we're going to call it we're going to call it constituency data table now that we have renamed the sheet we're going to go ahead and look to see which fields are supposed to be in this table. Now from the SBA paper or file, you're going to notice it says that the constituency data table should include the constituency name, the constituency number, and the number of voters in each constituency. I'm going to go ahead and start building the table. Starting in row one of the new sheet, I'm going to type constituency name, constituency number, and the number of voters. And remember, you can use the tab key to go across to the next cell. We're going to use NO for short. And then number of voters. Any field that you have inside of the database tables that that is in more than one table, you need to ensure that they remain consistent right across all tables. So what I'm going to do, because I already have the constituency names typed on the key sheet, I'm going to locate the key sheet. I'm going to highlight all the constituency names. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to the. I'm going to go back to the the new sheet that I had. As a constituency data table, I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. I'm going to now write the constituency number. For the constituency number, you are supposed to use the initial of the constituency plus a three digit number. So I'm going to use the same convention I use with the candidate ID 100. The next one is going to be S101, then E102, W103, NW104. SW105, EC106. There we have our constituency numbers. Now for the number of voters, what I will do, I will just simply copy what we have from the elections data backup sheet. So we locate that sheet, number of voters. So we want the ones for, we want the number of voters for north, south, east, north, south, east west and then the other so we're going to start with north I'm going to look for the election data, data backup and i'm going to look for north along here we're just going to pick copy any one of them so right click and copy any one of them and paste it all the north should be the same so it doesn't matter which one you copy next one is going to be the south so copy and I'm going to go ahead and complete that and return. All right, so now we have the new constituency data table. I have highlighted the data in the table already. I'm going to right click and copy and we're going to do the same thing we did in our previous video. We're going to open up the database file and we're going to right click and paste in the white area. Ask the same question again. Does the first row of your data contain column headings? We say yes and it will say all objects were imported successfully click ok and the table should now appear all we need to do now is open the table go to the design view by right clicking you could have let me go back so you could have right clicked on the name of the table to go to design view or you could simply click on the design view icon here so we want to ensure that the constituency name is text the constituency number is text the number of voters is number 
However, the constituency number should be size 5. Also, it should be the primary key in the table. So we make it primary key and save it. No data will be lost in this case, so we say yes. And we can go back to the data sheet. But that is our table here. So two tables have now been completed. I'm going to go ahead and complete the the third table, and that table now is going to be the table is now going to be the elections data table. So we're going to rename the sheet as elections data selections data press enter so apparently i have two elections data here so i'm going to call elections data one for the time being until we get back to the database all right so we need um we need three columns one is constituency number next one is going to be percentage voter turnout actually it's two columns let's see what is here so it says constituency number and the percentage voter turnout okay so that's all we need constituency number and percentage voter turnout No, we have the percentage voter turnout already on the key sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it here. Now that I have pasted it here, I know that the first constituency was north. So north is N100. And the next, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to the constituency data table. Since everything is in the same order, I'm just going to copy the, the constituency numbers here. And I'm going to okay, just paste it over it and everything will appear. And they actually have it here. The third table is complete. Do the same thing again. Highlight the table data. Copy. Go back to your database. Right click. Paste. Say yes. Okay. And then we have the table. I'm going to rename the table in this case and just remove the one. Enter. We're going to do the same thing again. Go to the design view, ensure that the constituency number is text, the percentage voter turnout is number. We want to ensure that the number is in two decimal places. Let's see what is in the data sheet view. So we want it to be two decimal places. So design view, we're going to set the number to standard. And we're going to set the decimal places here to 2. And we're going to change the constituency number here. Put it as a part, make it the primary key. And we're going to set the field size to 5 to keep it consistent across all tables. I'm going to say yes here. And then we're going to go back to the data sheet. And there we have it two decimal places, all the constituencies. Now, now that you have completed all three tables, before you decide to go into creating your queries, we must do something first. And before we do that, we need to ensure that we close all the tables. Now the next step is for us to create the relationships. And when we're creating relationships in Microsoft Office Access, we go to the Database Tools tab, we click on Relationships. And in this case, we're adding all the tables. So I'm going to add all the tables. And I'm going to I'm going to highlight all the tables rather and then click add. You don't need to click add more than once. You can add each table one at a time, but it is easier to just highlight everything given that you're going to be using all the three tables. Click close. And I'm going to put the elections data table in the center. That's just how I prefer to have it. Now, when you create relationships, and before I can even create this relationship, I'm realizing now that the candidate ID was not set as a primary key. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to go to the candidate personal data table let's go to the design view and i'm going to set the primary key the candidate id as a primary key field the other thing is i'm going to change the field size as it was not changed to five 
and I'm going to double check now to ensure that the constituency number is also 5. It is not 5, so I'm going to set it to 5. Before you can do your relationships, you need to ensure that your tables have primary keys. That's 1. 2. That those fields on which you're going to create the relationships, they are the same, same spelling, same field size, and same data type right across all tables. Otherwise, you're going to have challenges. So we're going to save that. Click Yes. Close the table. And then we are ready to go. So I'm going to take the constituency number from this table. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold it down. And I'm going to place it directly over the constituency number in the elections data table. Notice that the pointed part of the arrow is on the word constituency number. That's how it's supposed to be. If you put it down here, it's going to create the wrong relationship. If you put it up here, it will not work. So we put it down here. And we're going to enforce referential integrity. You get marks for that. Now, apparently, I have some issues with my constituency number, which is why I'm getting this message. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double check the constituency numbers that are in my candidate personal data table and compare them with the ones I have in my elections data table to ensure that they are the same. I'm going to fix the error and return. Okay, now I realize that when I did the last video, I had entered some constituency numbers but they were not the same as the ones I used in the last two tables that I created in this video so what I did was I just ensured that all the constituency numbers that were inside the constituency table were the same ones that were being used in the elections data table and the same ones that were, be were being used in the candidate personal data table now we are ready to go ahead so I'm going to take the constituency number from here from the personal data table by clicking on it holding it down putting it over constituency number in the elections data table release the mouse check and force referential integrity you do get a mark for that in the database so you will realize that one constituency has several candidates right and then we go from constituency number to constituency number again so we click on it hold it down drag it and place it over the next constituency number release enforce referential integrity create for every constituency here there's a there's a corresponding con constituency inside here with the percentage voter turnout hence a one to one relationship and in this case a many to one relationship you could do the relationship between these two tables but it is not necessary i'll show you what it looks like from constituency number here to constituency number here and for its referential integrity create and we get a one to many relationship but it's not necessary so i'm going to delete it and then we're going to save the relationship as it is we're finished with the relationship we are going to close and that concludes the creation of all three tables along with the relationships.